20 years after a brutal homicide took place in Chicago, police just want to know from you, do you know Fernando? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Kevin Kluwer. Viewer discretion is advised. Kevin James Kluwer was born on April 7th, 1972, and he was actually born in Hammond, Indiana. He was the second child, and he only had one brother, an older brother. His brother would later say that, you know, so he, the older brother was seven years older. He remembered, you know, growing up as a kid, being really, really close with his brother. But by the time the older brother was now a teenager and Kevin was still in his, like, younger years, they kind of, like, turned into that, you know, how brothers are and like ah, I hate you and all that kind of thing and and so for a couple years there for like four or five years they just were normal brothers who didn't really get along that well but then by the time more time had passed the two of them became really close again his his brother described him growing up as like this chubby little curly headed kid who just loved getting dirty and and being outdoors and just just, you know, being a normal boy. As he got older, you know, Kevin matured and he became just this really well-liked, funny, intelligent guy. He was super, like, energetic and fun-loving and full of energy and life. He became an uncle, uh, and when he became an uncle, it was, like, the proudest moment of his life. He absolutely adored his niece, and his nieces said they always looked for Uncle Kevin at every family gathering that they just loved being around him. One of his nieces would say that they really, really looked up to their Uncle Kevin a lot. He instilled in them, you know, to always make sure you're showing others kindness, respect, and to just make sure that in any given situation, make sure everyone is as happy as you can make them be. Kevin was also incredibly sociable and he loved hanging out with his friends. He had a ton of friends. He loved going out to bars and just, shooting the shit with people. Back when Kevin was in high school, he made the, what well, you know, I can, I can attest the very tough, the difficult sort of choice to come out as gay to the people in his life. And I think there's always, everyone's always waiting with bated breath, like how, how is the, how are the family going to react? How is everyone going to respond to this? And luckily for Kevin and, and for me too, uh, his, family was they were proud of him they loved him for who he was they didn't they didn't bother them that he was gay as a matter of fact for like thanksgiving and christmases he would bring over like you know guys that he was seeing and the family treated those guys like they were family as well the family was incredibly welcoming and very supportive of Kevin through that. And then by his late 20s, Kevin would decide he wanted to kind of start his life. He wanted to go somewhere where he may feel more himself. And so he would move to Chicago, Illinois. And that is where he was living at the time of this case. It was March 23rd, 2004. 31-year-old Kevin was hanging out with his friends like he always loved to do. They were going bar hopping on North Halstead Street. They had gone to, I believe, at least three different bars, and this was a normal thing they did. And at the final bar they went to, Kevin met a stranger, a man who identified himself as the name Fernando. At the end of the evening, Kevin, I guess, invited Fernando back to his apartment, to Kevin's apartment. I believe Fernando at least stated to him that he was gay. Whether or not he actually is, I'm not I'm not sure. And so by everyone's accounts, this Fernando person went back to Kevin's place with him. And unfortunately for his friends, that was the last time they would ever see Kevin alive again. The following day, Kevin did not show up for work, and that was extremely unlike him. He was someone, if he was going to miss work, he was going to call. His work got no phone calls, and so his family found out that he did not show up for work, and they immediately were like, something's wrong. And so his Kevin's dad, I guess he had separated from um, Kevin's mom at some point, but Kevin's mom had called Kevin's dad and said, hey, can you please just go check on Kevin? 
I guess his dad lived in the area at this point. The dad goes to the apartment and he tries to open Kevin's door, but it seems to be locked. He's like banging on the door, knocking. He's getting no response from Kevin. And so he's just like, something feels off. Something is wrong. And so he manages to essentially, I guess, bust the door down or open. And he gains entry to the apartment and... He finds something that no parent should ever have to find. It was an incredibly brutal scene. Um, in his bedroom, Kevin was lying on his stomach, I believe on his bed. I mean, the bed was just like saturated in blood. And Kevin uh, had blood. His entire shirt was just bloody. And there was very clear like marks on the shirt that indicated stab wounds. Kevin was dead. Um, there was no chance of saving him. When police arrived, they secured the scene. They collected as much evidence as they could. I believe they found the murder weapon just somewhere outside. It was like this kind of like a steak knife is what it looked like. I don't know if they think that more than one knife was used because the knife they found wasn't like covered in blood or anything. But when the coroner got Kevin, they determined that he had been stabbed 42 times and every single stab wound was to his back. So Kevin was likely already lying down on his stomach in bed when his assailant stabbed him repeatedly. There were no defensive wounds on Kevin. He had no stabs to his hands or arms or his legs or anything indicating he tried to fight back. Uh, so probably those first couple of stabs really probably incapacitated him and he couldn't do anything. And then he was stabbed 40-ish more times. When police are questioning all of his friends, they find out that they had gone bar hopping the night before and that Kevin had left the bar with a man named Fernando and that Fernando was going back to the apartment with Kevin. Police were like, okay, we got to know who this Fernando guy is because by every account, he's likely the last person to have seen Kevin alive if not being his killer, just in general. They were able to get a composite drawing of this Fernando person by getting descriptions from all of the friends. And they passed this flyer out with his face all over this neighborhood, throughout all of these bars, throughout the apartment building that Kevin lived in, where he was killed. They were passing it out everywhere. And they were just hoping against all hope that somebody would recognize this man and know who he was. Police from the get-go, it didn't sound like they believed that Fernando was his actual name. By some descriptions that people gave, they believed that Fernando was likely Puerto Rican, and there is a good chance that maybe at this point he fled back to Puerto Rico. In terms of the motive, they believe that this was probably a robbery. I don't know if they actually stole anything or what they stole, and there's a possibility that Fernando just posed as a gay man to get inside this apartment to rob Kevin. And, you know, they didn't know each other prior to this meeting at the bar. And so this was a chance encounter. And in a situation like that, where, you know, nobody actually knows this guy's name or anything, it's, it's very difficult to find this guy. I don't 100% know if they have actually, I, I feel confident they don't have fingerprints or the killer's DNA. And we'll get to that in a, in a minute or two here, but it doesn't sound like they do. And so, at that point, they believe Fernando is the killer. They just need to know where he is and who he is. So the case actually ends up going pretty cold pretty fast. Sadly, within a year, by 2005, both of Kevin's parents, within weeks of one another, both pass away. And they never got to find out who did this to their son, and they never got to see justice get done. His brother has continued to fight and seek answers and get any kind of closure they can get. And that would lead to about 2020, when I, I think it's his brother received a Facebook message from somebody. And police in 2023 would announce that this Facebook message has led them to the identity of Fernando. From what it sounds like, the Facebook message came from a neighbor who was a neighbor to this Fernando person. They recognized him based on the sketch. And so police in Chicago were able to follow up on this and they, I, they found out the identity of Fernando. However, they have not publicly stated what his actual name is. 
but it does sound like Fernando is for sure not his name. They did confirm that Fernando was in fact from Puerto Rico. And when they finally were able to track him down, they found him in Puerto Rico. And they discovered that he had previous convictions and offenses for like prostitution and nonviolent type crimes. They interviewed people in Fernando's life and they all said that he's never been known to be a violent guy. The only crimes he's really committed are things like theft, and prostitution. They also learned that through Fernando, there may have been actually a second man involved in this attack on Kevin. But again, who that person is, it's not known. Now here's where I, I feel confident that police don't really have fingerprints or DNA is because they have basically stated that this Fernando person, whose name they're not releasing, is, they believe he is the one. They believe he is the killer of Kevin. But they said, they said basically, quote, identifying a suspect is one thing, but proving he is the suspect is a whole other. Because, you know, the way this works is you can sit there and say, I pretty, I'm pretty confident I know who did this. I know who killed this man. I know who wielded that knife and I know who stabbed him to death. I know it, but I can't prove it. And unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, you you have to be able to prove it. You have to have some type of evidence to show for sure that this is the one who did this. And unfortunately, as of 2024, as of me filming this, they don't have that evidence. They want to make sure that if they are going to go to trial, that they have the evidence to convict his killer. They don't want to roll the dice and say, eh, we think it could be him. All we have is the circumstantial stuff. And it's and then the jury's like, Ugh, but there's a lot of reasonable doubt now, so we can't convict. They want to be able to convict him, which, you know, I it's admirable. I, I think that's definitely good. And so they are really needing the public's help, especially those who live in that neighborhood in Chicago and even people who may know this Fernando person in Puerto Rico. They need your help. They need to know if you know anything that if Fernando, whoever he may be, has fully confessed to the crime to someone, if he has revealed information that nobody else should know about this murder. Simply because they've identified who Fernando is, it's, again, it does not place him in that apartment and stating that he did it. They need more, and so they need your help to find that. Something else that came to their attention was, I guess, there were very similar attacks that happened, I think, once in 2003 and another one in 2005. So just before and just after Kevin's murder. And they believe that Fernando and this other individual who is linked to him may have been responsible for those attacks too. I don't really have any information though on those attacks. We can't just, well, I should say, I should say we shouldn't just arrest people based on a gut feeling or instinct. We should be able, we should only arrest people once we have proof. But, you know, I, as I say that, well, we all know that's never really always the truth or the case. Somebody somewhere out there has got to know the truth, has got to have the answers. It sounds like he, he has spilled the beans to some people and not all of these people have come forward. And there's a good chance you might be afraid of this individual, that he may harm you. So if you do have information, you can always report whatever you know anonymously. You do not have to say who you are at all. You just have to say what you know. There is a chance he, Fernando, might have also used the name Francisco and also Adolfo is what police have uncovered. So you may know him as Fernando, Francisco, or Adolfo, or something different. The, the image of Fernando, based on what I can see, is a pretty accurate rendering of what this man actually looked like back in 2004. Maybe you have photos of him that you can go, oh my god, that's him. And maybe you have something somewhere, like, you, just anything. If you have any information about the murder of Kevin Kluwer, please contact the police at 312-744-8261. If you know anything that can help bring this man or these men to justice, please do so. Please help Kevin and his family get the justice they all very rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case. 
True Crime Aruni Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you are new here and you like true crime, please subscribe to the channel uh, and also give the video a like and hit the bell, all that stuffy stuff, stuff, stuffs. Never again. Okay. And also you can follow me over on, I have two different TikTok pages where I post true crime, short form true crime stories. The links to those are going to pop up here at some point in the beginning and at the end of this video. They also are in the link tree in the description of this video below. Stop it. You got it. Also in that link tree, you will find my merch store. We sell like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. Nothing super fancy, but we do ship all over this entire planet. So wherever you live on it, We'll send it to you. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then lastly, if there is a case you want me to cover, just send me a super quick email. My email is listed below. And just send me the name of the case or the individual, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is over 6,300 names long. I cannot promise you and I'll cover your case because I pick each case at random. So, it'll happen eventually. I just can't tell you when. Sorry. Oh. Okay, I'm weird. Anyway, fuck, ouch, I hurt my wrist doing that. That's how you know you're getting old, right? When you just like breathe the wrong way and just your wrist hurts. Like I, this not related, not related at all, but ow, I just threw out my wrist. God, getting old is so annoying. I'm almost 40. I'm going to be 40 in less than a year. Basically, I'm near death. I'll be dead within, how long does a person live? 42 years or something, I don't got much time left. So, you know, that's basic science and math. Don't hold me to it, or do, or don't. I don't know, maybe it's an X-File. What, what am I doing? Anyway, uh, that's it for this video, true crime Yeehaw, nope, 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 no yeehaws, Mike. As always, it's awkward to say goodbye. Um, goodbye, so long. To you, my friends, goodbye, mm -hmm. until we meet again. That's from a song, a thing, a show I used to like when I was babysitting my nieces and nephews. I don't know where it came from. What the fuck am I doing? I don't know. Okay, bye.